Hello and welcome to The Download, coming to you live from Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen's studio here in Detroit and Brad Eli. The Los Angeles Religious Education Congress is once again underway right now, happily eroding the Catholic faith of its attendees as it does year after year. It began in 1956 as a Catholic institute for religious ed teachers. Also called the L.A. Rec, it sadly morphed immensely throughout the years and has been wrecking the Catholic faith of religious educators and Catholic youth for decades. Gaining steam in the 80s under the direction of L.A.'s former Archbishop, the infamous Cardinal Roger Mahoney. Mahoney was best known for overseeing the largest series of sex abuse payouts of any single diocese, totally more than a half a billion dollars, as well as covering for predator priests in his archdiocese for years. Truth be told, the man should be behind bars. Yet L.A.'s current Archbishop, Jose Gomez, is once again allowing this gangster cardinal to speak at the conference along with an all-star lineup of heterodox priests like Father James Martin, who thinks people are born gay and they should embrace their lifestyle, uh, Arthur Fitzmaurice, director of the Dissident Catholic Association for Lesbian and Gay Ministry, and Father Brian Massingale, who says Catholics can dissent from Catholic moral teaching on sexuality with a perfectly clear conscience. Massingale also welcomes transgender ideology. Uh, so, but there's another prelate who's speaking there, uh, Christine, will be covering him, who will be speaking at the conference, who believes that there's a reasonable hope that all people from Hitler to Judas are saved. Stephen will uncover the nefarious past of Cardinal Roger Mahoney, and Rodney will expose the gay wave of conference speakers who are hell-bent on whitewashing homosexuality at the conference. So, Christine, what about this barren theology? Yeah, once again, Bishop Robert Barron, who's auxiliary bishop in L.A., will be speaking once again at the L.A. Rec. And we've been reporting on the Rec for years and years. People have made their complaints known to Bishop Archbishop Gomez about the, I mean, it's just incredibly problematic. It's just open dissent, open heresy right there being taught to the faithful, and nothing is ever done about it. Gomez gives the idea, at least when he speaks to people, that he's concerned, but nothing ever happens. Bishop Barron, like I said, will be speaking again. And... Um, He's problematic, not so much because he's as openly heretical as people like Father Martin or Mass and Gail or Fitzmaurice, but because his problems are more subtle. But what's interesting is that he's actually becoming more and more, well, the Mass is coming off now more and more, um, and he's becoming more open in problematic things. So, for instance, um, as we've said for many years now, he has a very problematic position on hell. It's essentially repackaged universalism, and universalism has been condemned by the church explicitly as a heresy. What he promotes, rather, is there is a reasonable hope that all men are saved. He bases it on Hans Urs von Balthasar, but when you read von Balthasar's reasoning, which I have done and many of us here have done, if you analyze it, again, it's really just repackaged universalism, which is a heresy. But listen to what Bishop Barron said on hell in this little clip here. We shouldn't talk about God capriciously sending people to hell. We should think of hell this way. If anyone's in it, and by the way, the church is not obliging anyone to believe that a human being is in hell. We just don't know. But if there is anyone in it, it's someone who has absolutely insisted on not attending the party. Okay, well, first of all, no one here in the Catholic Church has never taught that God capriciously sends anybody to hell. We know we, that's kind of just a straw man. And true, the church has not dogmatically defined that any single person is definitely in hell, hell. But our Lord himself says, Judas, he calls him the son of perdition and says it would have been better had he never been born. He never would have been, said that about a soul that ends up in heaven, of right. course, a saint. Yeah. So we, we know that Judas is in hell because of what Jesus said. That's one person. But we also know based from what our Lord said that um, you know, uh, a narrow is the road to heaven or the path to life, and few there are who find it. Broad is the path to destruction, and many there are who, who walk that path. So we know few are saved, many are not. That's from our Lord himself. But Bishop Barron has since doubled down after criticism. This is what he said in a quote. Balthazar argued that, given what God has accomplished in Christ, we may reasonably hope that all people will be saved. My own conviction is that Balthazar has this more or less right. Catholic doctrine is that hell exists, but yet the church has never claimed to know if any human being is actually in hell. Once again, it's a straw man argument, red herring, you know, it, it's just wrong. But another thing that's been problematic about Bishop Barron is that he 
has openly said he would not fight against gay marriage. He would just leave the, the regime as it is now. He was on the Rubin Report. And if, as people know, Dave Rubin is a same-sex married homosexual. And they talked about lots of hot-button issues, abortion, contraception. And then he brought up gay marriage. And this, in part, is what Bishop Barron had to say on the show. So gay marriage was passed, what is it, a year and a half ago or so? Yeah. Almost two years now. Um, did you, I assume you felt it was the wrong decision by the court. Is that, is that fair to say? I don't want to put words in your mouth. Yeah, no, I, I do, but I don't think I would want to press it much further. I think where we are right now in the States, I'll apply the Aquinas principle. I think it would probably cause much more uh, problem and dissension and difficulty if we kept pressing it. So, so then do you not see gay marriage as one of the ones that you said was so pressing earlier when you said that abortion would be one that is so pressing yeah. that it could shift, it could alter the course of a country or something? I, do you not see gay marriage at that level of severity? No, I, I do think it does have a negative impact on the wider society. I do think it is, a, in a certain way, a compromising or undermining of an institution that's key to the uh, health of a society. Um, can, can you explain that a little further? Like, if, how so? Just as the uh, dignity of the individual is fundamental morally, so I think marriage, we've classically seen as the great building block of the wider society. So all the different forms of social life are grounded finally in that fundamental form of social life. So marriage open to children is that form. And society, I think, takes that as one of its foundational elements. Um, so I do think there's a compromising if we, um, if we forget the integrity of that, uh, that foundation. Yeah, is this one of the things where I sense that your heart and your, uh, your spiritual sense self maybe aren't quite matched up. Because I, I, I don't sense judgment from you sitting yeah. here. I really don't. Yeah. Um, and I don't sense that you want, that you would try to legislate to reverse the decision. But I also sense that you can't fully say to me, well, it's, it's okay. Yeah, no, and that's probably right. The way you just put it there is probably right. I, I wouldn't want to fully just say, that's great, off you go. Yeah. At the same time, I wouldn't want to get onto a, you know, a crusader's tank and try to you know, reverse that. Okay, so there you have a prince of the apostles, a successor, a uh, prince of the church, a successor to the apostles, refusing to draw a line in the sand on gay marriage. Ben Shapiro, who is not a Catholic, he's an Orthodox Jew, displayed more courage and more guts on the Dave Rubin show than this shepherd did. Mm -hmm. Because Dave Rubin asked him, where do you stand on same-sex marriage? Ben Shapiro came right out and said, it's wrong, it's immoral, it needs to be reversed. Came right out and said, it was very clear not like this namby-pamby, wussy, you know, whatever this was, a mishmash, um, cowardly response from Bishop Barron. And this is the man who's being chosen not just to speak at the LA Rec. There are now rumors, rumblings, very, you know, credible, that he will be sent to Alabama to be possibly the new face of EWTN. I think this would have Mother Angelica turning in her grave. If you recall, she did a very strong speech in 1993 on EWTN, you know, reacting to the liberal push in the church. Let's just, let's just re, re, you know, remind ourselves what this little fireball was all about. Let's hear a little clip of this. I am so tired of you liberal church in America. And everything you've ever done has gone in silence. Nothing, nothing you've done from your rich craft to your enneagrams to your centering prayer to all this earth spirituality to replacing holy water with sand to destroying our churches and closing churches that are viable and, and ready to go no, this is not an accident we've swallowed this now for 30 years and I'm tired of it Mother Angelica just was such, she was so passionate. She had a very strong vision for EWTN. And since that time, many people have said, including some people at EWTN itself, that it's really taken a turn for the worse. And you can expect it to get even worse if, if Bishop Barron goes there and becomes the new face of this media empire. Yeah, well, with Bishop Barron there, I mean, the argument that God overwhelmingly accomplished so much act and redemption that he emptied hell. What about the demons then? You know, God said that hell was made for the demons. And they're going to be there for eternity. So... You know, what about them? Why do um, people get a pass and they don't? But another problematic uh, prelate speaking, a very problematic prelate speaking, uh, many people are upset about, mm -hmm. uh, the infamous Cardinal Roger, Cardinal Roger Mahoney. Mahoney. Yes, former Archbishop of Los Angeles. 
Yeah, of all the travesties that are scheduled to uh, occur at the 2019 LA Rec, I think uh, uh, the most appalling is his appearance. He's going to be uh, leading a workshop titled Connecting Junior High and High School Students with the Volatile Immigration Issues. And uh, he has just a, a reprehensible history as Bishop of Stockton from 1980 to 1985 and then Archbishop of Los Angeles from 1985 to 2011. Mahoney facilitated a tsunami of clerical sex abuse. Uh, thanks to his corruption in 2007, the large diocese of LA, as you referred to, Brad, in the, in the open, it was forced to shell out $660 million in sex abuse settlements, and that's the largest payout in church history. Uh, uh, and then after files uh, uh, on Mahoney's cover-up uh, went public in 2013, current LA Archbishop uh, uh, Jose Gomez issued a statement saying, quote, I have informed Cardinal Mahoney that he will no longer have any administrative or public duties, but by uh, 2018 he was back publicly sang Mass at a church in North Hollywood. Now, this sparked backlash among uh, L.A. Catholics who, in the wake of the uh, the McCarrick scandal, uh, just they weren't having any of it. They picketed his, uh, his presen presence at Mass. We've got a clip of this. Let's check it out. Thoughts and prayers anywhere are not enough. Organizers of today's demonstration are demanding more, specifically targeting Cardinal Roger Mahoney. We want the Attorney General to start a grand jury investigation on criminal behavior of Mahoney. Although some protesters are conflicted about possible criminal action, they don't think he should still be a cardinal. To see Cardinal Mahoney start giving mass again has infuriated me and many of my friends. Mahoney was never convicted of a crime, but admitted he knew of sexual abuse and didn't call police. Back then, that isn't the way these matters were approached. It's just, we just didn't do it that it's way. Just it's just absurd. Well, and, and the thing is, Mahoney didn't just look the other way. He actively worked to cover for predator priests. He repeatedly transferred clerics who had credibly accused clerics out of California and in some cases out of the country in an attempt to allow the statutes of limitations to expire. Now, faithful Catholics are rightly protesting his presence at the L.A. Rec, and, and they're slamming the conference for providing a platform for a bishop who enabled the rape of minors. It's insanity. Uh, among those who are spotlighting this travesty is Dr. Jennifer Morse, founder and president of the pro-family uh, pro group, the Ruth Institute. Uh, Morse has blasted the Archdiocese of L.A. for allowing Mahoney to appear at the conference in spite of victims' advocates' calls for his talk to be canceled. She said the following, quote, Many victims of childhood sexual abuse view Cardinal Mahoney as a symbol of the mishandling of the sexual abuse of children by the clergy. His public presence is deeply hurtful to them. Many child abuse survivors experience PTSD symptoms. Some, like Cardinal, someone like Cardinal Mahoney can trigger terrible memories for them. And in a petition calling for the cancellation of Mahoney's appearance has been circulating. It's got nearly 8,000 signatures. But despite all the protests, the LA Rec has not rescinded, rescinded its invitation. He's scheduled to, to go ahead. And, and if you speak. recall, we um, talked about this, I think, last month. We reported on Archbishop Gomez. Someone was trying to present to him a petition yes, regarding right. Mahoney, and he threw the person out. Yeah, he wouldn't even yeah. take the petition. Right, right. Yeah, it was in that backdraft of um, between uh, uh, Pope Benedict XVI uh, abdicating and uh, uh, Jorge Bigolio being elected. When McCarrick got his, uh, uh, the restrictions taken off of him, that was when Cardinal Mahoney got set free uh, under uh, Gomez, too, mm -hmm. in that same window of time. But there's a whole pro-gay wave, Rodney, out there that's just set hell-bent on whitewashing homosexuality at this conference. Yeah, this thing's called the Religious Education Conference, but they just should call it the her Heresy and Sodomy Conference. Um, you know, instead of focusing on uh, you know the matters of sexuality that really uh, impact Catholics today, the porn epidemic, um, uh, you know, how, how remaining chaste in a hypersexualized society, building strong marriages, et cetera, et cetera. It's all LGBTQ all the time, every year. Since, you know, for, for years now, it's just they've been drumming this and saying nothing of, of these other things are actually bringing souls to hell, uh, things that actually help Catholics. Um, it's not the first year that, you know, people these these pro sodomy people are there the, these people are enemies of the church they're enemies of Christ you have uh, father james martin he's uh, he's going to be speaking on showing welcome and respect to lgbtq 
people in our parishes. Um, he's one of the most ardent promoters of uh, homosexuality in the church today. He's basically a cry bully. That's a cry baby and a bully uh, who always plays the victim and speaks to people who don't challenge him strongly. He won't talk to people who have a good solid argument about uh, against him. His cheerleaders are uh, mostly people who hate the Catholic Church. If you look at his stuff on Twitter, the people who are applauding him are, you know, saying, oh, I left the church because of this, and, you know, they're atheists and all this other stuff. These are people who hate Christ in the church, and he's speaking directly to them. He'll say, oh, well, I'm not saying anything against church teaching, but these people know, and they're expecting him to change church, you know, teaching on these things, especially sexual matters. He had advocates uh, sodomy, child, child transgenderism, illegal immigration, uh, and besides all that, he teaches heresy on the nature of our Lord. He's always, he's always, you know, he's, he, he'll say, well, I'm not a theologian, but, and then he'll say some like ridiculous thing about our Lord not knowing stuff, and it's on and on and on, and this guy's a superstar at this conference. Uh, the next, another one, Arthur Fitzmaurice. Uh, he's speaking on building bridges with Catholic Catholics who are lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, or questioning. And he's going to be giving another conference called Combating Stigma, HIV AIDS, the Latinx community, and the Catholic Church. Um, again, another guy who's been there, he's been here for several years now. Um, he has an open door to parishes all over the country to just go and spew his pro-homosexual filth. Um, he says there's no such thing as living in a binary world. Um, and he calls the church's um, proscription against homosexuality, uh, calling it intrinsically disordered. He says it's a gravely evil language. Um, a third person there is Yunwen Trujillo um, speaking to the Spanish crowd because there's a lot of uh, Spanish who attend there um, and so they're not neglecting them either with their heresy and uh, LGBTQ garbage. Uh, she's talking about Catholic ethics regarding the acceptance of LGBTQ people in our parishes and ministries. So and re remember here that you know, we've had some bishops on the East Coast and, and uh, the bishops of Chicago having this pipeline of gay seminarians from South and Central America. So they have this big interest in pushing the homosexual agenda to the Hispanic populations too. And it, this is, you're getting this and liturgical dancing and all sorts of just crazy nonsense. You're getting everything but the faith. Well, you know, the dance around is, is sodomy a mortal sin or not? Is right. sodomy a mortal sin or not? And they just won't answer that question. So what about if you're welcoming, you know, racist people? Why not go yeah. on a pledge of welcoming? They're, they're people, they're on the peripheries. We need to welcome them. Yeah. You know, they're racist, okay, mm -hmm. but we need to welcome them. Don't talk about racism as a sin. That would never fly with these Maybe people. Maybe Bishop Barron would say racists are in hell. Okay. Not, not <laughs> so Another like character him. that's a familiar face out there is uh, Father Brian Massengale. He's been there many, many years. Basically, if you listen to him, it's just a slippery serpent poison. He will talk about the faith and how good it is and how wonderful it is and how much, you know. And then he slides in the little, the little left turn there that says, but it's just one element. Catholic teaching is just one element for you to go ahead and discern whether you should do this or do that. And if you actually disagree with church teaching, you can do so in good conscience. It's just one That's, of the many road signs. Yeah. yeah, it's one of the many road signs. It's just one of those indications yeah. on what you should do, but just one. And mm. you know, you're free to choose. And it's basically up to you to decide. And what you decide, that's that you're in clear conscience in doing that. How is that guy affirming the faith out there? These people have free range in the parishes too. They're speaking. They're they're widely sought speakers. They're they're not censured. None of this stuff. This is other, insane. Yeah, another prominent another prominent individual who uh, is Father uh, Thomas Reese. He's a Jesuit. Big surprise mm -hmm. there. He's going to be speaking on uh, reforming church governance, what Pope Francis has done, and what he needs to do. And then another uh, another talk: the sex abuse crisis, a church that needs to take action. But well, we know what kind of uh, action he is prescribing and what he won't prescribe. He's a he's very enthusiastically uh, supported gay marriage. He said this, actually, quote, I personally think the church's battle against uh, the legalization of gay marriage is misplaced. The idea that gay marriage is somehow a threat to family life or heterosexual marriage doesn't make sense. And so, I mean, he'll, he'll just be preaching the same thing at, uh, at the L.A. Rick. He's uh, a contributor to the National Catholic Reporter, uh, former uh, uh, contributor to uh, America Magazine. So, uh, just, just more of the same. What yeah. battle exactly against gay marriage was he talking about? <laughs> right. The right, American right. bishops were like, 
They, they totally laid over and let that thing crush them. That there was no bi battle over it. Well, we know we need to pray and pray hard that the LA that LA's Archbishop Jose Gomez gets his St. Paul moment and stops allowing this travesty to go on year after year, destroying the faith, wrecking the faith of people out there. Uh, and, and it's got to stop. We need to stand up. We need to take a stand. Because if we don't, who will? What priest is going to go against the archbishop? What priest is going to go against the, uh, the establishment out there? You know? So as uh, Bishop Sheen, Archbishop Sheen says, it's the laity who's going to save Holy Mother Church. It's the laity who's actually going to take uh, a stand here. And we do that through prayer. We do that through fasting. Uh, so that he'll stop allowing these dissident speakers at his conference. This is a conference especially for religious educators. The devil wants the faith of these teachers poisoned so he can use them to poison the faith of future generations of unsuspecting Catholics. Pray, fast, call the archdiocese, raise holy hell. Souls are at stake. And being Friday, it Lent, it's once again time for another episode of Holy Mackerel. Lone Shark is at it again this week, teaching a sort of alms taking when we should be practicing alms giving. Find out what happens today on a new episode of Holy Mackerel, premiering in just a few moments right here. If you're not watching live, then you can catch the Holy Mackerel episodes by going to our site, churchmilton.com, and going to the Shows tab. Stay tuned and God bless.